So you've reached the part of the game where you can now approach notice boards for odd jobs or see a green icon above an NPC's head. I'm sure many of you have questions like, are these odd jobs important enough to do? Which ones should you do first? Do they impact your story? Well, let's dive into which ones you should prioritize and look at all the rewards and the things surrounding them to help make your decision on that. Now, there are two ways to start an odd job. One is to find a person with an odd job icon above their head, and the second one is to go find an odd job board in a town or settlement that has the listings of these specific jobs. When you select an odd job from the board, it'll then highlight the person you have to go to on the map. When you talk to an NPC to initiate an odd job, you'll notice that one specific person in your party is always going to show up in a cutscene with you talking with the odd job person. This is a sign that when you complete your quest, your relationship with that party member will increase. And when you reach a higher level in your relationship, you'll get a notification that your relationship has deepened. This is going to be very important later in the game because depending on who you have a deeper relationship with in your party is going to affect some crucial moments around chapter eight and then later in chapter 12. So you can determine how you want to min or max out specific relationships with certain people in your party. To see your relationship with your party members, all you have to do is press L1 in the overworld, take a look at them, and you'll see the symbols above their heads. In the early game, it's going to be gray, but as you start to do odd jobs, you'll start to see changes in their icon. Now, odd jobs are not only important for your relationship with your party members, but also when you complete them, they increase the overall party level, which is going to be extremely important for unlocking different synergy abilities, limit breaks, and power-ups in your folios. So completing them is important for you to get stronger but of course you have to make the decision on which one you want to do based on if you want to get powerful or if you want to go ahead and improve relationships with specific people so let's help you make this decision starting off with the first quest this quest is called flowers from the hill and this is going to be issued from Chloe who is going to be located inside of Bill's ranch and as soon as you go up to her and initiate the quest you'll notice that Aerith is the one that is going to be taking initiative for this one. So if you're an Aerith lover, this is a great one to do. For this quest line, you simply just have to go over to a flower field, fight some monsters, bring back some flowers, and upon completion of this quest, you'll receive Teleroic Scriptures Volume 1, which actually is really important because it gives Aerith 10 SP, which will then allow you to use those SP points to purchase synergy abilities, as well as any upgrades that you may choose under Aerith skill trees. Or as this game kind of talks about it, skills within their cores in the folios. It's a lot. If you are trying to improve your relationship with Aerith, then this is the right quest for you to do. The next odd job quest is called Livestock's Bane. This side quest can be found at Oliver's Farm, which is going to be a fast travel point on your map. You'll notice that Red takes an active role in helping you with this quest. The goal of this quest is simply just to go ahead and hop on your chocobo and look for scents that lead you to a unique monster. Monster. Now this quest is actually really important for the reason of assessing this monster when you arrive there. Chadley is going to be able to give you more combat simulator battles that offer you unique materia based on the number of monsters you assess in the grasslands. Seriously, do not forget to assess this monster or in fact any monsters in any side quest because you will not be able to find these monsters roaming around naturally. When you're done, go ahead and turn this quest over to Oliver and you'll be getting an Owl Bracer. And if you're curious, this actually is an accessory that comes with two materia slots that are linked. If you have a materia like Auto Cast and combine it with the healing materia, then your characters will be able to just heal naturally. You can do this with a lot of other materia in the game. You'll also be able to increase your relationship with Red after this. And the reason why this quest is so important is because because this one will actually unlock another quest that is hidden in Calm. Now the next odd job we're going over is actually the one that follows up from the farm, which is going to be where the wind blows. And for this side quest, I really want you to enjoy it yourself, so I'm just going to go over the basics about it. For this specific side quest, you want to initiate it with Broden at the inn, who is then going to send you to meet up with the lady at the windmill, and for this specific quest, she's actually going to require you to give her a special item that you must craft. 
And believe it or not, this special item is tied all the way back to you unlocking things on the map, basically the world intel. And in order to even get the item she wants, you're going to have to do two expedition intels, which is basically going to be the crystals that you're going to have to analyze. You can do any two crystals. It doesn't matter which ones that will unlock something known as excavation intel. And it's going to show up as a shovel icon on your map. And that specific one is going to require you to take your chocobo. You're going to notice that you're going to be getting a key item for this quest. So make sure you do that. And then you have to go around and collect a bunch of materials on the ground and craft this item. The cool thing about it is you can craft this item way ahead of time, even before this odd job. Once you give the lady the item that she requires, you'll get a slight cutscene where a special material actually falls on the ground. You're going to have to run up to it and you're going to find out that that is going to be the cleansing material, which is going to be really good to get rid of status effects like poison when you encounter it in the game later on. Then go back to Calm and talk to Broden to finish the quest. He will then give you the Whistle Wind Scarf. This scarf is really cool because it's going to fill the ATB gauge at the start of battle, which is going to help you get out your ATB attacks a lot faster. Since this is also another red quest, this is going to increase your relationship with red even more. This next odd job quest is called a lifeline in peril. This odd job is going to be given right at the center of town by the mayor of calm. And you'll notice when you start off this quest that Barrett will be very involved. For this quest, it's going to be really really simple. You just have to head over to a warehouse, gather some parts, and go ahead and fix the Mako pipeline. This is actually a fun quest line that continues the story with this person throughout the game. So if you want to know this story, please go ahead and do this one. It's fun. But unfortunately, the rewards aren't as amazing for doing this one. You don't get any special items for this quest. You're just going to improve your relationship with Barrett and you'll be getting yourself 3000 gil. If you're a money hoarder, then this is probably going to be a great quest. I'm a money hoarder. I've done everything in the grasslands. But yeah, if you want money, do this one. Now, this next odd job is called a rare card lost. And for this quest, it involves a bartender that lost a specific Queen's Blood card. And we know who the best bartender ever is in the game, and that's Tifa. So for all the Tifa lovers out there, like myself, this was a very important quest as my relationship with her depended on me completing this quest. Seriously, I needed to deepen my relationship with her. And this quest was extremely complicated because it forces you to play the lovely game Queen's Blood. Essentially, the bartender lost their card pretty much gambling, and you're going to have to go around to claim this card from battling different people in Queen's Blood. It's not just one person, but multiple people. So you have to understand exactly how to play this game. My quick suggestion is to actually go and try to learn the game properly, but don't worry, you'll find a video for that on my channel later on. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, once you've finished battling everyone, you'll actually be able to claim a really good Queen's blood card which is listed as number 107 the chocobo and mugo card which is actually a card i used to beat the entire queen's blood quest line with also the final person that you do a queen's blood battle with is going to also sell you some amazing cards that are really powerful so make sure you do this so you can buy those from him as well, especially that Titan card. And I also wanted to point out the developers make it seem like Queen's Blood is an optional thing in the game, but believe it or not, it's in the side quest like you've just seen, and they're going to throw it in the main story. You cannot avoid Queen's Blood, so please start to try and experiment with your Queen's Blood cards that you have. And you have to go through all this to deepen your relationship with Tifa. You Tifa fans should know how important that is. So these are all the initial side quests you'll have in the early game, which I consider only the grasslands. So let me know which side quest you're actually going to do and click on this video that's on my face. Seriously, it's going to help you a lot with this game.